Well, Forefront, Forefront, it is so good to be with you guys today. Thank you for joining in on our, our live stream here with us this morning. And uh, so thankful for technology that can bring us together in a moment like this, where we can't be the church in one building together, but we can be the church across the city uh, in multiple buildings. So thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you so much for just hanging with us this week as there were so much information that we were praying over and collecting and, and talking through uh, t- to be together and, and trying to determine what the right move was for us today. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are doing great, feeling great. hope this morning you're able to gather together with your life group and watch this live stream uh, or to come together with your family or some friends and just, again, be the church in multiple places and multiple homes throughout the city. So, so thankful for technology like this. Well, I know I can say for all of us that it has been a crazy week. It has absolutely been uh, one of the most bizarre weeks I can remember. And as Tyler mentioned earlier, for the last three weeks or more, we've really been, if you're like me, glued to your phones, glued to the news outlets, trying to just get a handle and figure out what's going on. Uh, there's just so much uncertainty and all the information we're receiving from different, uh, different sources. And uh, so it's just really an interesting time. And I don't know about you, but you know, I went to the store a couple weeks ago and it, you know, it, just, it seemed like there was just this mass panic and everybody ran out. And for some reason, everybody bought toilet paper. <laughs> so um, hopefully you've been able to uh, find some out there. I, I got on eBay yesterday and, and found that um, and saw that uh, actually somebody's selling uh, a roll of toilet paper for $5 each. Uh, so I guess if you need a roll... There's your, there's your way to, to find it. So um, if you need toilet paper, just email Tyler Gross at ForefrontChurch.tv and we'll make sure to uh, see what we can do for you. But, but it's just been, it's been crazy these last couple of weeks. And like me, a big sports fan, this week I saw the NCAA tournament, was thinking about not allowing fans to go to the tournament. And then all of a sudden an NBA player got sick and then the NBA uh, decided to suspend the season. Uh, the NCAA tournament was canceled and Uh, You would just continue to see uh, organization after organization decide that what's best right now is to just push pause. Colleges going virtual, employers sending uh, their employees home. Uh, It's just a really interesting time, and in this moment, uh, we feel like things are just changing so fast. There's just so much uncertainty. So how should we feel? What do we do? Where do we look? Um, And so as we look across our nation, we just see that it's a scary time. And we're all looking for answers. So as a church, we, we love you so much, and your health is so important to us that we decided that we're going to play our part to help flatten the curve and to allow uh, our healthcare professionals to catch up. And, and so my heart breaks that we can't be together today because I feel like in moments of uncertainty and fear and panic, what we need to do is to come together and pray and love on each other and look to God's word. Um, and we can't do that in person today, but, but thanks for hanging with us. Um, on the live stream this morning. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. In moments like this, in moments of uncertainty, when we don't know what to think, when things seem to be moving so quickly, when things seem to be changing, we, we find ourselves just asking questions because we're caught in that uncertainty. And, and especially with the coronavirus, we wonder, what's going to happen? How long is this going to last? Am I going to get sick? Is my family member going to get sick? Is the stock market going to rebound. And so there's just all of these questions, all this uncertainty we're left asking these questions about. And, and, and I don't know about you, but for me, it often drives me to a place of anxiety and fear and worry and, and panic sets in. And I think for a lot of us in America, this is the first time we've really ever dealt with this. We've heard about these challenges across the world, but this is really our first go at this. And um, and, and so there is this uncertainty and, and this panic, and um, you we're trying to figure out how things should look. And so as Christians, I, I think it could be easy for us to wonder, God, where are you at in this? God, are you with us during this time? God, are you there? You know, these past few weeks, if you've uh, been joining us, we've been in a series called I Love My Church and talking about the reasons why we love the church. Uh, but I want to push pause on that, on that series today, and I want to really kind of lean into this tension that we're all feeling right now, this, this emotion that, that is going on, this uncertainty. And I want to lean in and I want to look to, to God's word to see what does God's word tell us that we should do in these moments, in these moments of uncertainty, when we're not sure where to look. You know, there's a, a story in, in the book of Genesis. Um, we know uh, God called Abraham, a man by the name of Abram, called him out and said, God, you know, God said, Abraham, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bless the world through you. 
And, and so God called Abraham to move into the place that God was going to show him. And Abraham and his wife, he was going to, uh, to uh, make this promise to make them a great nation. And so Abraham got up and followed God. And, and as Abraham was following God, Abraham was traveling. Abraham and Sarah were traveling to a place called Gerar. And in Genesis chapter 20, we see that Abraham was in a place where there was uncertainty. And he was fearful. He was worried because of his wife, Sarah, and she was beautiful. He thought that maybe he would lose his life on account of his wife. So he thought, well, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Instead of trusting God, I'm going to make a plan. And so Abraham showed up in Gerar and told the people in Gerar and King Abimelech that Sarah was his sister. And so the king took Sarah, thinking she was beautiful, took Sarah to be his wife. And God came to the king and said, stop right there. Don't go any further. If you do, you're going to bring great disaster and devastation on your people. And as you can imagine, the king was really upset. He went to Abraham. He's like, what is this thing you've done to us? And what we see is Abraham didn't trust God in an uncertain moment and instead made his own plan. And his own plan almost led to devastation. And I think that's a place that a lot of us can find ourselves in, in moments of uncertainty. We, we can find ourselves looking and going, God, where are you in this moment? I don't know that I can trust that you're with me, and so I'm going to take matters into my own hands, and I'm going to do things that are outside of what you would want me to do with my life. And we begin to doubt God in those moments. So this morning, I want us to ask this question, what do we do? I know we've all, we've all kind of felt this emotion these past few weeks of this scare and the threat and the uncertainty. So where do we look? Where do we go? What do we do? And maybe it's not this pandemic specifically. Maybe you've been walking through a season where there's a scary health diagnosis. There's been a loss of a job or there's a family relationship issue and there's just uncertainty. So where do we go? What do we do? Where do we look? How do we respond? So this morning I want to look to Psalm 121. The 121st Psalm. It's a great Psalm, and, and it's really a Psalm that tells us what to do in moments of uncertainty, in moments of fear and anxiety where panic can set in. And I love what the psalmist says. He says, What you do first is you focus on what you look at and where you put your eyes. And this is what I think God is telling us in this moment. He wants us to be the church. And as Christians, we have an opportunity to lean into this situation, to be the people of confidence and trust and reason to, sh to shine the light of Christ in our communities and point people to the fact that God is ultimately still in control and still running the world as he always has. And so I want to dive into one Psalm 121 this morning. And, and there's really three really action steps or three moves that we can take in these moments of uncertainty to keep our eyes focused on God. So if you have your Bibles open, look with me to Psalm 121, the 121st Psalm. The psalmist writes here in Psalm 121. He says, I lift my eyes to the hills, for where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The, Lord, the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Church, this is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this, this time that we can come together virtually, online, to do church online. And we thank you for the technology that uh, today and in 2020, we can, we can see this, this great, amazing truth that, that you call us to lift our eyes to you, that our help comes from you. You're the one in control, and you'll guard us, and you'll keep us. Father, I pray that in this time of uncertainty, help us to not be fearful, but help us to rest and to trust that you are in control. And I pray, Lord, that you be with those uh, in, in, our, in our church and in our community and in our, in our families, Lord. Uh, be with those that have just found themselves in this moment of, of panic and uncertainty. and um, Lord, we're, we're ca it's causing doubt in our hearts. Father, we pray for uh, the medical community. We pray for the hospitals. We pray for doctors and nurses and clinics. We pray that you just help them have the supplies and, and the, the things that they need to, to care well for those that are sick. Lord, we pray for the scientists. The, those that are working with the CDC and the World Health Organization across the globe to come up with a vaccine that can help slow this down and help stop.
stop it in its tracks. I pray that these efforts we're all making together to, to help um, disperse, to flatten the curve that it, that it works and, and that we see a quick change in the tide uh, with the coronavirus. But Father, no matter what the next week or two or month or two looks like, help us to know that you are in control and that you are guiding each and every one of our steps. I pray, Lord, today as we finish with our time, we look more like Jesus than when we came in. And it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. So forefront this morning, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about where we look when we find ourselves in times of uncertainty. And, and I love the, this 121st Psalm because here's what God tells us. He says, look to him. Look, look back at Psalm 121. He says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. For where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is a really cool psalm. It's uh, known as a psalm of ascent. Uh, a, uh, in ancient Israel, uh, Jews who did not live in Jerusalem would pilgrimage, would journey to Jerusalem for festivals. And so if it was time for the Passover, then the Jews would gather together with their family or their community and they would travel to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, like many fortress cities in the ancient world, was built high on a hill. And so you can imagine being one of those traveling uh, pilgrims who's working his way to Jerusalem. You have a long journey, and you're journeying through desert. You're journeying through uh, very treacherous paths. You're walking uh, on unstable ground, and you're journeying through some paths that were very dangerous, where robbers and raiders would, would lie in wait for your caravan to come through. Imagine walking through some of the, just the scariest cities in America, or in the world, at, at, in the middle of the night. Walking through, and maybe you have a few people with you, but there could be somebody waiting for you. And so there's this fear, there's this uncertainty, how is this going to go? Not to mention, as the pilgrims traveled, they traveled up these paths towards Jerusalem where the, the footing wasn't great, and so there's just uncertainty and fear. And so what I love is this psalm is written for pilgrimage, pilgrimage, uh, or traveling Jews to sing together as they walked, as they journeyed. They would sing this song. They would remind themselves of where they're supposed to keep their eyes and who they're trusting in on the journey. And so I think it's, it, it's so fitting for us as we journey through this time for us. And I personally know um, in moments of uncertainty, it's easy to look down. When moments of uncertainty, when there's worry, when there's panic, when you don't know what's going to happen next, it's easy to look down and to look at your circumstances, um, to stay glued to our phones and, and get wrapped up in the, the panic. But what God says is in that moment, when you want to look down, rather look up. Keep your eyes focused on me. And this is what I want us to see. So um, it, here, here's what we see in Psalm 121. We see really three things to do in these moments. And the first one is this. Keep your eyes on God. Your heavenly Father says, keep your eyes on me during this time. Look back here with me at verses 1 and 2. He says, I lift. The psalmist is writing. He says, I lift. I choose to lift my eyes to the hills. It, it, this is a willful choosing. It's, it's, he's saying, I am going to do this. This is what I want to do. This is where I know that I need to look. I know in, in my own life, when I find myself in, in, in scary moments, I look to what I think is safe. And so my kids, they fall down, they crash their bike on the sidewalk, they run towards me. They look to me as that safe outlet that they can come and be cared for. Maybe for some of you, you have a tough day at the office and you call your spouse. Or you've got that best friend that you've been buddies with forever. And on that tough day, you give them a call. Because just hearing their voice makes you feel better. And, and you know that God is with you. In that moment, this is what God is telling us to do, that he is that one that is the person to be looked towards in these moments of fear and uncertainty. But look, look what the psalmist is looking for. He's looking for help. Look at verse 2. He says, I lift my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He's saying, I look to the one that created all of this. I look to the one who's in control, who is holding the world and the universe in the palm of his hand. He is the one that I look to. Too. He is the one that brings help. He is the one who made it all. I, I just, it's a beautiful verse. One of the things I, I, I love, one of, one of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. And one of my, probably my favorite book when I was a kid was The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And so I'm trying to get my kids into C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia. So on Disney Plus, they've got the Chronicles of Narnia. 
And so we've been watching The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with my kids, and, and they're falling in love with the story. But there's this great scene at the very end of the movie. It's the last battle. And, and uh, Peter and Edmund are, are fighting the, the white witch and the evil army, and there's this, this great battle. And there's this point in the last battle toward the end of the movie uh, and toward the end of the book where it seems like the good guys are losing ground and the white witch and the evil army are really taking a foothold and Edmund and the white witch are in a sword fight and she strikes Edmund down. Peter thinks Edmund's hurt or maybe even killed so he runs toward the white witch and he embraces in battle. And all of a sudden, if you know the movie, the music changes. The, the, the score shifts. The intensity changes to a hopeful song. And all of a sudden, you see... Aslan, the, the, the figure of, of Jesus, risen, and he's standing on top of this rock, and he roars, and it's like the most beautiful, crazy roar you've ever heard, and he pounces down, and he pounces on the white witch, and takes her out, and he looks at Peter, and he says, Peter, it's finished. Aslan came, and he brought the, the, the army of Narnia with him, and they defeated the evil army of the white witch, and changed the tide for the, the people of Narnia for good. It, it's just, I love that. I love the, 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 the symbolism and, and who Aslan is, that Aslan is on the move. And I think this is what the psalmist wants us to see today, that God is on the move, that God isn't going to let us, he's not going to let us face destruction because he is in control. So he wants us to keep our eyes up, our eyes pointed towards him. I like what Charles Spurgeon writes. Spurgeon says this. He says that no help comes from anywhere else but from the eternal hills. Spurgeon says, let us lift up our eyes, therefore, hoping, hopefully expecting help from the hills. I like that. We're expecting God's help. We're expecting God to be on the move, to rescue us. The psalmist, Spurgeon continues, the psalmist with the eye of faith could see it coming, so he watched it approach. And, and this is where you and I find ourselves. We have the choice to where we're going to look. Are we going to look at our phones and social media? Are we going to look at the Fox News and CNBC and CNN and the stories that we see online? Are we going to look to the voices around us that, uh, that you can hear panic and fear in their voice? Or are we going to look to God, the one who is the one that brings the help, the one who is in control? Are we going to look to the one who is on the move? The, the choice is ours. We've got to keep our heads up, forefront. You know, I know the NBA has been suspended and the college basketball tournament has been canceled, and I, I love this time of year. Um, one of my favorite point guards of all time, arguably the greatest point guard of all time, is Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was so good, even though you may not like the Lakers, Magic was incredible. Nobody could pass like Magic. Nobody could no-look pass like Magic. But here's the thing about Magic. Even on a no-look pass, if you watch any of his film, he always kept his head up. He was always looking down the court. He always looking for that player that was moving, that he could make the dish and lead to a bucket. Magic kept his head up. And this is what God tells you and me to keep our heads up, to keep our eyes up, focused on him because he's bringing us open. Aslan is on the move, church. God is on the move. And we can trust in that. Now, it doesn't come overnight. It might take some time for us to begin to do this, but God is faithful and he promises us as we keep our eyes on him, he's going to work through us and change us. But let's be like racehorses with blinders on. Let's cut the distractions and the things that we don't need to hear and let's run the race with endurance, staying fixed on Jesus. Because when we do, God's going to fill our hearts with trust and hope, which is exactly what we need and this community needs right now in this time. So that's what the psalmist tells us here in Psalm 121. First, keep your eyes on God. Look here, uh, secondly, look what he says secondly. He says that we need to continually remind ourselves that God's in control. So, so this is the second action we take this week when you find those moments of panic or fear or somebody around you is falling into that. Just help remind that God is in control. Look back here at verses uh, 3 through 6. In verse 3, the psalmist says that God, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Verse 5, the, the Lord is your keeper. He is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. I love this, again, this picture of the pilgrimaging, uh, pilgrimaging Jew that's traveling to J Jerusalem. And, and he's just saying, look, 
I'm keeping my eyes on God because I know God's in control of this thing and he's going to protect me. A few years ago, um, more than a few years ago, about a dozen years ago, uh, a group of, uh, a church group uh, that I was a part of in Kansas City, we uh, hopped in a, uh, a tour bus, not a tour bus, but a coach bus, and we traveled uh, to Rocky Mountain National Park. And it was beautiful, it was around Labor Day, and, and one of the guys, a buddy of mine, name, a buddy of mine named Sam, decided that he was going to go hiking in flip-flops, which probably wasn't a very good idea. And so we're up in Rocky Mountain National Park, we're hiking the trail up to Dream Lake. If you've ever been up there, you know it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. And up by Dream Lake, there's some rocks you can kind of climb on to get some really cool pictures. And so he was on top of a rock kind of posing. And then he decides he's going to jump off the rock and we're going to continue to hike. And he jumps off and he's wearing flip-flops and he catches his foot on the rock and there's all this loose gravel and it slips. And a rock pops up in his flip-flop and just get, cuts his foot really bad. And he's bleeding all over the place. And, you know, it's not, not a very good place to be with a cut like that. And it, thankfully, we got him patched up. But the rest of the week... He was in bad shape because he didn't have his, the right footing. Imagine that, that, that Jewish person traveling to Jerusalem in ancient Israel for a, a festival for Passover. and He's walking on these trails, these tight little narrow trails where the gravel is loose and he's slipping. And if you slip and you go too far down, you're going to lose your life. That's the end of the story. And so what God is telling us is that as we walk through these uncertain times, as we walk when there's loose footing, to keep our eyes up on him and to remember that ultimately he's the one in control. He's the one that's going to hold us in place. He's going to guide us. I love what Psalm thirty-seven twenty-three says. The psalmist says that the steps of a man are established by the Lord. When he delights in his way, though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. Just imagine, when we trip, when we slip, God is there catch us. My kids are, are still pretty young, and they trip over everything. Every day, one of the kids is falling, tripping over their own feet. Last week, my little one fell over the back of the couch, and I had to do a Jerry Rice diving catch to try to keep her from the ground. That's what kids do. That's what we do, too. We find ourselves in these moments of uncertainty. We're looking down, not up. What do we do? We trip. But what a beautiful promise that God's going to catch us. He might catch you by your foot. <laughs> by your hand. That's a great promise that God's going to be there to catch us as we go. How, how do we know? How can we be so confident God's going to catch us? Well, the psalmist says here, look at verse 3. He says that God will not let your foot be moved because he doesn't sleep or slumber. He says he will keep Israel. He will keep his people because he doesn't sleep or slumber. What, 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 is, he, what is the psalmist saying? Is that God is never off the clock. God is always on. He's always Awake. You know, the great, um, the great warrior, Alexander the Great, he was asked once, you know, he has so many enemies, he's conquered so many lands, how can he sleep comfortably at night? And he said, because his faithful guards are just right outside. That's the, the beauty of what God says to us is he's always on guard. He's always watching. He's never going to let us slip as long as we keep our eyes on him. And even when we decide to try to go our own way and we let this panic and this fear cause us to get off the path and we slip and fall, God's going to catch us. But as we do that, God wants us to learn to trust him more and more every time. So it's such an encouragement to us here in Psalm 121 that God is going to catch us if we fall. But also look, look what he says in verses 5 and 6. He says that God is our keeper, that God is our shade. God is our, our divine sunscreen, better than SPS 50. You know, imagine that, that, that Jew traveling to Jerusalem, the sun is out. If you have a short haircut like me, you know, you like to wear your hair short, it's in right now. The sun is hot. And so God is there to be our sun shade. I like what Matthew Henry, the commentator, writes. He says, God not only protects those whom he is a keeper of, but he refreshes them. He is their shade. It's like a cold drink on a hot day. But he also, I love that he's our keeper. Verse you know, verse, um, verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. I love that. It's just a beautiful picture. The early Native Americans had a tradition in, in many of their contexts where they would help prepare one of their young braves for um, his, his uh, life of being a hunter and, and being a leader. And so what they would do is on this young brave's 13th birthday, 
he would, um, as, after he's proven that he's mastered fishing and hunting, he could use his bow, his father would blindfold him, take him out into the dense forest, and he would have to stay the night. And so they would hunker down in the forest in the night and be in a place where they were uh, making sure, you know, he was in a place where he was having to fight off any animals that were coming, I- I- you know, any prey, anything. You know, it, it's dark out. He can't see anything except for the moonlight, and he's hearing these noises. And so I, I can't imagine the moment of panic that would have been the uncertainty in that moment. Uh, but what was beautiful about this, this situation is as soon as the dawn broke and the sun began to cast its light into that forest, that, that, that young brave, 13 years old, who spent the night in the darkness, begins to look up, and he starts to see the colors of the forest. He starts to see the flowers and the trees. And then just a few feet away, he sees his father standing there with a bow and arrow in his hand. The young brave didn't know it, but his dad was there the entire time watching. Nothing bad was going to happen. And this is what God says to us. We're in this moment of uncertainty. We're in the dense forest. We don't know what is going to come next. We don't know what threats are around us. And God says, look, I get it, but I'm your keeper. I'm just a few feet away with my bow and my arrow in my hand. And don't worry, I'm going to keep you safe. Let's love the promises of God and the truth that he is with us in this moment. So God wants us to, to stay calm, to not panic, to not freak out, but rather to trust and to know that he is in control and to keep reminding ourselves of that truth over and over. And just stay faithful. Even when we can't see him, he's working. He's on the move. So we keep our eyes up. Second, we remember that God's in control. And, and third, I want to close with this. God wants us to rest in his promises. God wants us to rest in his promises. Look back at verses 7 and 8. The psalmist says this. He says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. I, I just, I love this picture. I love this, this picture that he gives us, this beautiful promise. God's going to keep us. It makes me think of the great promise of Deuteronomy 31.6, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. It makes me think of Jesus' words, some of his last words to us before he ascended to heaven where he says, I will be with you even to the end of the age. God is going to keep us. It's the great promise of the good news of the gospel because without Jesus, there is no confidence. There is no promise. But Jesus came and traded places with us to take our sin on his shoulders and so that we can have new life and a new promise and an, inher- an eternal inheritance. And he just calls us to trust him, to keep our eyes on him, and to rest in his promises. You know, one of the reasons I think this is so hard is because we get caught up in the what ifs. I, I know personally, what ifs are like on the edge of my tongue every time. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this doesn't slow down? What if I do get sick? What if the stock market never rebounds? What if? Do you know what I love about God's promises, though? God's promises cover all the what ifs. God's promises cover all the whatevers because God's promises remain no matter what happens. He promises to be with us, to never forsake us, to never leave us, to guide us. And he wants us to rest in them, to rest in that truth. You know, I think of the Apostle Paul in the book of 2 Timothy. Paul's nearing the end of his life. Paul's been beaten and shipwrecked and stoned and arrested, and he's in jail, and he's awaiting, you know, sentencing. He knows the end is near. And he looks to Timothy, and he writes this letter, and he says this. 2 Timothy 4.18, he says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever Amen. What an amazing perspective to keep in a time of uncertainty. Paul could have at any moment been pulled out of that jail cell. At any moment, you and I can can find out bad news or or things change so quickly. How do we keep this perspective that God is going to keep his promises? How do we stay in front of that? I think we do it by prayerfully reminding ourselves of God's promises, by meditating on God's promises, by even repeating it or reading back God's promises to him. You know, we have one week left on our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And here's my my challenge to you. This week, as you you read, as we dive into the scriptures together, as we pray together, remind God of that promise he's given us. I encourage you to memorize Psalm 121. It's, It's only eight verses. It's not very long. Memorize it. Read that back to God in your prayer time. 
Say, God, I'm standing firm. I am resting in your promises. I'm not going to let the anxiety of this situation cause me to panic, but I'm going to trust. And believe it or not, I can actually rest and find rest for my weary soul in God's word. If you were with us last week, Nate and Robin Ray were here from the Front Church in uh, Utah, uh, plant, church planters near Salt Lake City. And we were hanging out with Nate and Robin after church a little bit. And we were talking about just all the beautiful places in Utah. And we were talking about some of the great parks. And we were talking about Zion National Park. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And Robin was talking about uh, a place in Zion called Angel's Landing that she would take college groups up to and they would go hike and uh, and Nate, you know, we were just talking about that spot. And if you've ever hiked Angel's Landing, you know there's a really sketchy stretch of trail where the only thing you have to hold on to is a chain link. And you have to, in that moment, decide, am I going to trust this chain link? Am I going to hold on to this chain link and make it across? Or am I going to turn around and go back? A lot of people turn around and go back. This is kind of where we find ourselves right now. We're in a moment with a narrow path not a whole lot to hold on to. But what God is saying to us is, I'm here. I'm right here. Hold on to me. Don't panic. Don't fear. Rather, trust. Trust that I'm in control. God promises to be with us, to guide our steps, church. And he wants to use you to be the light of the world, to be the church, to be confident that God has got us in his hands. He's going to keep us. And so this week, I think God is calling us to go and, and, and to, to be smart, to be diligent, to be prudent, but to be the church and to be the calming voice for our families, for our friends, on Facebook, Instagram, on social media, and in this community. And to point people to the one that loved us so much, he traded his places with us so we could have life. And so this week, what an opportunity we have to be the church. I love what uh, Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he, God, will make your paths straight. Let's turn our eyes to him this week, and he'll keep our paths straight. Let's pray together.